All right, I found another toy I couldn't help buying. Uh, I saw it. I literally bought it like the minute I saw it. A buddy of mine emailed me and said, this thing just hit the market today. You've got to check it out. It's the Ingenuity Precision Powder Measure. Uh, it does it a totally different way. So it is an add-on to your auto trickler, so it doesn't replace it. Uh, you've got to still have a V1, 2, or 3. Technically, you can work on a 4, and I'm going to show you how that works. Um, I've had it for a few days now. I've really been putting it through its paces. I have to tell you, the thing is pretty amazing. It utilizes a disc system. So let me show you here. Let me dump out this powder. All right, so it utilizes a disc system in here. And he sends it with three of the most commonly needed discs. So here's one for ball powder. This is for larger, like H1000 and Rotumbo. Um, I'm using the one for 4350, which is what we've got up in our hopper and then in the trickler. And, uh, and he's working on discs for, you know, some of the more esoteric type powders uh, as well. And he's going to have those out uh, in the very near future. It ships fully assembled. In fact, the packaging is pretty pretty nice it's all you know laser cut uh everything fits in there really nice and tight uh no worry about damage and shipping he does send you a and he, he says he's already updated this several times uh with compatible powders and then which disc you put in and like i said he's got more coming and and then uh like this thing comes assembled the way you see it uh it has one disc in it it does have a, a slightly like very very thin uh, sheet of oil so you're going to want to um just get in there with an alcohol wipe just to clean it out and wipe the discs down uh but that just takes a second uh you do flip this thing around if you need to go from extruded to ball powders and the nice thing is he sends you uh in the box there is this uh, which is a QR code and all you have to do is scan that and it goes right to his two instructional videos on how to assemble everything Let me just show you the couple of tiny things that I didn't get to see. There's no real close-up of this So I'm going to show you uh, And I, I know he's looking at, at doing some more videos too So um, I say that now but chances are he'll have a, a more detailed video coming uh, but uh, A couple things one when it's in this orientation and you're assembling it the lever goes on the right side the black wheel goes closest to the opening, and then the two grooved pieces go uh, on the back side here. The three button head screws go here, and then your bevel screw goes on the left to retain this spring right there. And that's really all there is to it. The stepper motor comes off of your old auto trickler. I think that's great because he's not charging you any kind of upcharge to buy another motor, so you just replace it from him. It utilizes your old V3 cables, so that's nice. And the only thing you have to do is drill a hole. All I did is position this where I thought I would need it and then just kind of brought this down and hit it with a Sharpie. Uh, and, you know, just make sure that you have enough clearance uh, on the unit uh, so that it sits flush uh, in the cup here. So it can sit at an angle which might affect performance. You need to make sure this hole is big enough uh, so that the tube is unobstructed in there. And then I just made a little Sharpie mark of where my tube length needed to be so that I knew I was good if I pulled it out or anything happened to it. So how about we see this thing in action? Let me prime it here with a little bit of powder. So we've got about 100 grains going in there. And uh, keep in mind, just like the Auto Trickler works, it does have a slider on the V1, 2, and 3. You're gonna have a slider in the back to adjust your trickler speed. You will need to play with it, right? Because every powder, every disc is gonna meter a little differently. Um, you know, so I've been, I've been, you know, trying to find that, you know, fine point between speed and, and accuracy. Um, I will tell you though, once you get this thing dialed in, it just doesn't overthrow. Um, most, I will say out of most of the throws, I've been either 0.02 or dead on, uh, 0.02 under or dead on. A very, very rare occasion does it even hit the 0.02 over. Uh, so let me just turn on a charge here. We're going to drop 51 grains here. Uh, let me do that again. It dropped too much out of the dump. Come on. There we go. So boom, 50.98. I forgot I had been doing some other testing with it. 50.98. 
And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, you know, we'll do a little stopwatch here, but, um, you know, watch this. Just under 10 seconds. Now I'm going from motor activation to stop. You know, that was 7.69. Uh, even if I go, you know, if we were if we were coming in here with a fresh pan and I was weighing it that way and I started the timer now, it's still gonna be crazy fast. And I'm about a grain and a half off. I could probably tighten it up just a little bit. So we're just over 10 seconds. Uh, again, if I do it from the point that I reset the scale, I mean, look at that. I mean, it is just stupid fast. Um, and, and like I said, once you get your slider back here uh, set up, you know, exactly where it, it kind of optimizes for your powder, uh, it just doesn't overthrow. I mean, it really doesn't. Uh, and I think that's just amazing. Again, that's because of the way that the disc system works. Now, I'll just tell you, in my particular case, I'm running 4350. My slider is, you know, probably about in the middle or even just slightly to the left side of middle. So it's running definitely slower than like if I was running it on the trickler itself. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because of the way it works. Um, you know, it's just a different relationship with that slider, but you just kind of move it around uh, just like you do for your other one, and then it tunes this thing right in. Now, in the event there's a power outage or I need to do something, uh, you know, with a with a, a non-electric scale and load, guess what? Uh, this thing uh, manually turns itself, so or, uh, you know, you can manually turn it, so I can just come in here and just manually trickle with it as well. So if that's something that's of interest to you, uh, and you like having that backup. I just love that. It's very easy to trickle in every click You know is is pretty much uh, One or two kernels so you get really used to you know what it's dropping when you do that But again, just I mean watch this. It's just crazy fast And there you go 51 so I mean it's just like boom 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 um, I, I personally think it's well worth the money now I'm not saying this, the system doesn't run well on its own, but you know, if, if you want to really eliminate those overthrows and if you want to speed it up, this thing is just a fantastic accessory for your V1, uh, V2 and V3. Now I'm going to show you what it does on a V4. Um, but you know, keep in mind it is designed for a one, two and three because of how the software works and because of how the hardware works on a V4. Uh, it is already a little bit faster and a little more optimized in how it works. Um, but this does still eliminate the overthrows, which I'm going to show you. Uh, you just have to realize that it, uh, V4, in all honesty, won't be as fast as putting this on a V3. I think I gained about three or four seconds on average uh, by going to the V4. Again, I mean, it's four seconds, but, uh, you know, over three or 400 rounds, it starts to add up if you do a lot of reloading. Uh I just, I giggle every time I run this thing because uh, it, it's, it's like the best of both worlds for me. Um, I mean, it's just like, that's it. I mean, okay, so we just had our first .02. I haven't had one of those in a while. I'm going to slow it down just another fraction. But, I mean, it's just, like, it's just crazy. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at what it takes to put this thing onto a V4. And this is what it looks like on a V4. Now, just like on the V3, you have to, you know, cut a hole. Uh, I used the same uh, step bit or whatever you want to call these uni bits uh, that I used on the other one. And just made a nice big hole here. No issues with draft um, that I found. Uh, but uh, just like on the V3, it works great that way. And I've got it set up in the exact same fashion. The only difference with the V4 is, for one, we want to put a little bit of a cap or something or a plug on the small tube because we're not using it. And 
stuff will, you know, powder will still vibrate out on occasion. That tube does fill up over time. Uh, I have checked, and, you know, after about 30 or 40 throws, that tube is still going to be full just from the natural vibration of the unit. So I did find just a little plastic cap at my hardware store. That works fine. Uh, as far as plugging in your stepper motor, let me just show you what I did. And, uh, you know, again, it isn't designed for a V4 yet, so this is a little bit of, you know, homebrew here. Uh, normally you would have to take off this stepper motor to put it here because I have multiple units I just left my v4 motor on and this is still my v3 Stepper motor, but normally you'd have to remove this in which case you'd be unplugging this little short colored cable and um, You know eventually there might be a bridge cable that goes from this to the stepper motor uh, but what I've done is taken an extra v3 cable that I have and Just stripped it away a little bit and then matched up the colors and just plugged it straight into the six pin connector to match up the colors. Uh, it's not the most elegant solution, but it does work. And I know a lot of people have been asking, does this work on a V4? Yeah, the answer is technically yes. Now, that comes with the same caveats that a normal V4 operates in, which is uh, you've got a large tube that turns and then takes a second to back off. Um, so it's not an instant transition to the small tube like on the V3. Um, you know, it's just something you have to keep in mind. You're not going to gain quite the speed variance that you did on a v3 uh, you get all of the accuracy with the disc in there though i've got the same setup which is 4350 running with a disc uh, designed for 4350 just like we were on the v3 i've already calibrated this and that's another thing to remember you know the system is designed to be calibrated with the powder that you're throwing so if you're changing discs or powder or whatever it is uh, you do need to make sure that you recalibrate it um, and that's just to optimize how it works and uh, I have gone in and tinkered with the settings, which because this has a little bit different mechanism, uh, you do have the ability to play with the numbers a little bit, uh, just like you did with a small tube here, and tune it uh, till you're happy with the results. Now I happen to be running it fairly aggressively, so keep that in mind. And I'm just gonna show you, I've got it set for 50 grains here. And there's that transition right there and then now it's picking up and there we go 4998 let's hit it again here let me make sure how much powder I've got okay So there's that. Again, we're dealing with a tube, so there is always a chance that you're going to have one kernel hit and make weight before the next one comes. But uh, in my testing so far, I've literally had maybe three or four all day that have even hit 0.02 over. And only when I was really cranking on this thing did I even get something to throw 0.04 over. Um, so once you have it tuned, I will just tell you this thing drops dead accurate every single time. Uh, I've been trying to get it to... Uh, you know, kind of overthrow once it was tuned. And uh, I'll be honest, I can't get it to do that because of the way it uses a disc each time. So you can just see, I mean, it's going to keep hitting this 9.8, maybe the perfect 50 every time. With smaller powders like a Varget or something uh, that are even more uniform than 4350, uh, you can actually hit that number every single time uh, without even getting the 0.02 variance because it's dropping one at a time. And if it ever does hit that, that O2 variant, so that was probably just a, a, a floating kernel uh, between the time it registered and, and stopped. So I've been doing this literally all day long with both the V3 and the V4, and, and this is just what it does. I mean, it's a really great design. Um, he put a ton of work into it. There's a lot of little, uh, you know, little engineering things in here. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, I think it's pretty amazing. Um, I think it's, you know, kind of a evolutionary step in trickling. Uh, we've seen, uh, you, know, there, you know, there have been disc tricklers in the past and, you know, even disc throwers in the past um, for different auto throw systems. But the way this one works with the discs like I showed you and the fact that he is constantly making new discs now based on different powders that are sent to him, um, you know, I think that this thing is a, is a winner. Um, just being honest, you know, I paid full price for it. Like I told you, uh, I have no regrets about it whatsoever. 
Um, really, really happy with it. And, you know, especially when you're loading two, three, four hundred rounds. Um, and if you're really, you know, it comes back to, you know, can you really shoot the difference between one or two kernels? Uh, you know, probably not. I, I don't think most people can. Um, I'm not even sure top end shooters can, to, you know. Um, I've been perfectly happy being within a 0.02 uh, variance, plus or minus, uh, without ever really having a problem on target. But I think there is something to the confidence that you get knowing that you are as tight as possible in your powder throws and not having to take time when it goes 0.04, 0.06 or something over uh, because, of, you know, a clump dumped or uh, something like that. You know, so if that's something that's important to you, if that's what you're looking for, uh, I think this thing's a really great way to go. So, uh, you know, the link's down below in the description. Uh, I'll even pin a comment uh, so you guys can find it. Uh, he sold a ton of these the first five or six days that they were released last week. Uh, but uh, I know he's committed to trying to keep these in stock as much as possible. Uh, but if it's something you want, I would definitely get an order in. And, uh, you know, I, this guy's smart. So um, love the way he designed it. Hope the walkthrough I did earlier made sense to you. And if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments below.